Well, good morning, Maganang Umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Wednesday, and it is the day after that big shopping trip that we went on yesterday. As you can see over my shoulder, I put the three the uh, patio chairs out here on the on the patio where, where the barbecue grill is, and I still have the covers on them because it was late last night. It was pitch black. And I'm not going to be sitting in them right now anyway because I have work to do because of all that building material that I got yesterday. Uh, and I'm trying to think this morning, which one should I attack first? And I tell you, I am so excited about getting some of that stonework. I think I might try to attempt working on one of the columns today for the fence post. Now you might ask yourself, well, that's only one post. You should be able to get a lot of stuff done. Well, I don't know if you've ever done tiling before. I have. And when you think something is really simple, when it comes to cutting tile work, anything that has to do with tile, or specifically natural stone, you need to double, triple, or maybe quadruple the amount of time you think in your mind you're gonna allocate for that project. And when we get into the project, I'll explain to you why it's gonna take so long, and you're gonna see why it takes so long. Now, before we get started with working on our home improvement project this morning, I think the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a ceremonious uh, removal of Hapon's cone that he has. He looks like he's healed up enough. There is, uh, I don't believe there's gonna be any problem with any bleeding or anything like that after his post-surgery. And it's about time, uh, between now and a few days from now. But the main thing was uh, there can't be any exposed uh, skin or anything like that from these from the stitches. And it, it looks like it's all dried up properly. So I'm going to do that this morning. And then I think I'm going to get started on some of the stonework for the fence. So uh, without further delay, let's get today's video underway. <music> Now before I get started, I noticed this morning while I was doing the intro uh, over my shoulder, I saw the papaya uh, by the Baje Kubo, and it looks like we have a lot of ripe papaya that needs to be pulled before the ants and the, and the flies get to them. Uh, you can see, oh and the flies are already here. Well it looks like I might be a little bit too late on some of these papaya. I'm not picking them early enough. Uh, you should start picking them right after they first start getting yellow uh, from their full green state. Uh, also up here, uh, that one, that one's a goner. I won't be able to do anything with it. But anyway, I don't know what to do when these trees start getting, they grow really, really tall. I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to take some advice from some of the locals around here or maybe some of you who grow papayas in your yard. What do you do when they start getting so tall? Do you have a ladder? Do you have some kind of uh, plucking device? I don't know. Uh, there's a couple of the papaya now that I can pull uh, that are uh, not damaged yet from the insects and I'm going to take those, I'll cut those up later on and I'll put them inside the freezer for a blender smoothie type of a mix. Uh, well let me go ahead and knock that real quick out before the flies take them away from me and then we'll get started on the stone project. I think that looks much better. I did all the pruning and I pulled down the bad fruit. The fruit had, had ants and flies and maggots and stuff like that. I, I need to be more attentive to that. Again, this is a new experience for me. Papaya is new for me and it's trial by fire. I'm learning as I'm going. Now, I, I will give you a, a word of advice. Don't stand underneath your papaya tree, especially the ones that are far up and take a shovel and try knocking down all that stuff without some type of a head cover like <laughs> like a hard hat or, or a baseball cap or something like that because when you're knocking that down, remember I said ants and mag and stuff like that? Uh, you, you can imagine where they're going to fall when you're knocking them down without protective cover on your head. And I will tell you right now that this is a rated G channel and if I don't do some creative editing tonight, uh, we're going to be have to be more aggressive in our rating because of uh, adult language and graphic nature. Well, before I get started for today, let's go ahead and take Hup Owen's uh, cone off of his head so he has the rest of the day to kind of relax and chill around the yard. He can play outside without bumping into every single thing that he walks by. Uh, Hup Owen! 
Come here. All right, come on, come on. You ready? We're gonna take your cone off. All right. cone how's that feel good <laughs> okay well, for some reason I expected to be much more happy than the expression that he's showing us right now Well, I think it's about time to get started. Let me show you some of the tools that I have for today's project. And the project is we're going to put some stonework on the fence post out here. So down here you'll see I have my marker. I have a black magic marker. And I recommend you use the marker over pencil because a lot of times when you're working with a wet uh, cutting saw, the pencil mark will just it'll wash right off and you can't see your marks. Um, I have a mallet where I can tap a little bit of the stone up against the post. I have my trowel, my, tr my notch trowel right here that I'm going to use to apply the tile adhesive. I have a hammer, and the reason I have a hammer is because I have these concrete nails over here. And I'm going to use these, and I'll explain how I'm going to be using this in just a minute. Uh, I have my little torpedo level. Uh, most important, I have water for hydration today. I have some extra strength or heavy duty tile adhesive, ABC tile adhesive. And the reason you want to use the, the heavy duty is because of the weight of the tile that you have right here. Remember, this is natural stone and it's going to produce a lot of downward weight from gravity and you want to use something that's going to have the best adhesive uh, properties as possible. Of course, my tile, my tile saw uh, some electricity to the power of my tile saw. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix my tile adhesive inside my wheelbarrow right here. And I, I really could use like one of the mixers that hook up to a drill and, and a bucket. That's really the best thing to have. And I saw those yesterday and I just totally, it slipped my mind that I'm going to need that. I'll pick that up at a later date. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about the nails that we have here. These are concrete nails. And the concrete nails aren't really supposed to rust. I have a feeling these are an inferior an inferior uh, concrete nail. And a lot of times your contractor will buy the cheapest thing on the market. So his bottom line, he gets a bigger, a bigger amount inside his pocket. And when they buy these cheap nails like this, what happens is, you know on our precast, you saw around the house, uh, some of the, it looks like rust stains that are going down. Well, they use these nails to apply the precast to the side of the house and when moisture gets in and it rains what it does is it exposes the nail and then it will drip behind it and cause the rust stain uh, something we'll have to deal with uh, um, cleaning sealing and doing some painting again uh, at the end of the project oh anyway the reason I was talking about these nails these nails what I'm going to do normally when you do uh, stonework you, you'll start from the bottom and you'll work your way up because the one on the bottom will support the weight of the next one and the next one and the next one well we have to be kind of precise here and it's going to be kind of difficult to do it like that so we're going to start from the top and why are we going to start from the top because i want to make sure that my stonework is even the top of the stonework right here fits perfectly up underneath this cap right here. Now, if we start from the bottom, we have no idea where we're gonna end up at the top. Uh, it could be anywhere in that section of where the stone, stonework is. And every single, you'll notice because every single column as you go all the way around uh, might have a different connection uh, thickness right here. We want it to all look uniform at this point right here. So we're gonna start from the top and go down. And the way you do that is when you put your stone uh, your 6 by 24 or whatever the size of your uh, stone cladding is, you put it up, you're going to put some adhesive and underneath it we're going to nail for support temporarily this concrete nail to hold it up there until it sets enough that it's not going to fall and then we're going to continue doing that. Now that pro it's going to take a little bit longer doing it like that but it will look more professional and so what we'll probably do is we'll probably do this top section right here, let that set, go on to another column and maybe do, try to do three columns and at least get them halfway down or something like that. 
get all the top section down and then what we're gonna have to do every layer all the way down we'll have to do it like that again it's gonna take a lot more time but it will look much more professional in the end now something else that we're gonna do when we cut when we cut our stonework and it's gonna be up here just like this right here we're not gonna cut it off at a 90 degree angle at least we're gonna try not to do that I'm not sure about the capability of my uh, tile saw that I have here we're gonna try to cut this we're gonna miter it at a 45 degree angle so we'll bring it out cut it at a 45 and the other one the other side will connect to it at another 45 degree angle so now you could take your tile and you can move it out here through the thickness of the tile itself plus the tile adhesive and you could take the other side and butt it right up against it so it's a square it's at a 90 degree and you just see the face here but it doesn't look as professional now the only limitation that might prevent you from doing the nice 45 degree miter cuts on here is pretty much your your tools uh, specifically your your saw over here now if the saw is underpowered or it's a small saw uh, it might not cut the 45 degree on a on stone stone is very hard this will cut a 45 degree easily on uh, like a porcelain or a ceramic type of a tile for inside your house or your patio floor but the stone is much thicker and much harder so we're gonna we're gonna attempt that we'll start out by doing a test of the 45 degree cut and if it can do that then we'll continue doing it we might have to do multiple blades or if it's too tough what will end up happening it'll burn out your saw now I will tell you and, and uh, experience has shown me that when you buy products in the Philippines a lot of the products are substandard uh, they're underpowered uh, and, and a lot of them have defective parts and they're not built very well A couple other recommendations before I get started, before I start mixing up my tile adhesive, before I start doing any cutting with my wet tile cutter over here. Uh, only mix the amount of tile adhesive that you think you can apply in a reasonable amount of time. Don't mix the whole bag because you have a pot life. Remember we talked about pot life in one of the earlier episodes. So don't mix more than you can put on your, uh, and get your, your stone up on the wall. I also recommend that you pre-cut as many pieces of stone as you can and make sure that they're cut appropriately for the size and allow for the tile adhesive that's going to be behind them. Remember, you can't cut it exactly the same size as the post because when you put the tile adhesive, it's gonna push it back. And when you push it back on both sides, it's, you're gonna need a longer length of your, of your uh, stonework. And one more tip before we get started. When you cut your stone, make sure when it's sitting on your tile cutter that you put the, the, the stone, the outward side, the side that you're going to be looking at on the top when your blade cuts through it in this direction and not on the opposite side from the back. So when you draw your areas that you're gonna be cutting, make sure that it's oriented so that this is on the top. And why do I recommend you doing it like that? It's because the side that you're going to be looking at, the outside of the stone, for the for the fence post it is not level it's not flat remember it's supposed to look natural so when you lay it on that side it's going to rock and you won't get a good straight cut the back side is a straighter area also with this on the bottom uh, the outer side that you're looking at if you were to flip it over that way you stand a chance of chipping the way the saw cuts through the stone when the the bottom side is the finished side you stand a chance of chipping some of the edges of your stone and you'll have some unsightly looking gouges
Now the first layer is done. A little trick of the trade that I can show you, especially, and this was one of the reasons why I chose uh, the gray slate, because it's so easy to work with and it's so easy to fix things uh, uh, like blemishes, because you can use your, your thin set or your tile adhesive if you get it the same color, like I have here, and what you do is you just take pieces of your tile adhesive in a little crack. If you have something that's not quite, especially on a 45 degree angle, and then you take it and you fill it in with a little bit of your thin set. And then what you do is you come back with a rag. Sort of like what you would be doing if you were doing grout. And then you just wipe off the excess and it blends in. And since it's natural stone, the tile adhesive that's gray along with the, the color of the stone, uh, you won't even notice it. But just look at my phone, I see it is 5.30. It's been a long day. I, I got started late. I don't think I got started till 9.30, 10.30 this morning. I don't remember what time it was when I got started. Uh, but it was late and I didn't get as much accomplished as I wanted to. Remember when I said when you are doing tile work, tile work, Tile work is intricate. Uh, maybe not six weeks in the basement CR type of an intricate or worth of time, but uh, the, the time it takes is a lot longer than you might expect. Well, I said I, my goal today was to complete one, one of the fence posts. <laughs> Uh, now, doing it backwards in reverse order from the top going down, it's a big challenge because you have to put the nails inside there. You just can't stack and go up uh, from the bottom to top and just keep placing pieces of tile work on there. Uh, and also, cutting tiles is exhaustive and you have to be precise. You have to make sure you don't make mistakes because uh, the stonework is not, not inexpensive, so you don't want to damage your tile work. So let me show you where I am now. So it's kind of dark out here, but I think you can see what I've gotten done. And it's not much. It's two rows around this one and two rows around this other post here as well. So you can generalize and say, I, if I were, were focusing on one post, I have four, which would bring me not quite even to a half of a post here. Well, you remember when I was saying, when you are estimating how much time it's gonna take you to do something, if you think it's gonna take one hour, it might be two, three, four, or five hours to do that job. And that's what happened with this one right here. I estimated one day to do one fence post, and I got half of a fence post, not even half of a fence post. So about, uh, my guess is probably maybe three times off of what I expected. But that's what I expected is to be off like that. Well, tomorrow is another day. And right now I'm just doing cleanup. I got to wash this. I already washed out some of the buckets, some of the tools. I need to put it away inside the garage. Uh, but tomorrow I might not work on this. Tomorrow what I might do is work on another project that involves something on the inside of the house. Probably that cabinet if I can find some bolts. I might have to run down to my local hardware store and get some nuts and bolts uh, to be able to secure it so it mounts properly up on the wall. Well, anyway, I'm going to close for now. My, my nephew is here, Miguel, and we're going to spend a little bit of time. We're going to grab a bite to eat. Uh, he brought me some real neat dessert from downtown, and we're just going to relax for a little bit this evening. Of course, it is the evening time. Oh, and heads up, still no call, still no text message from my builder. Well, anyway, I'm going to close for today. Oh, before I close, I just want you to see that Hopone is happy without his cone. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up, please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PR Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen, you'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until that time, you have a wonderful and blessed day.